Well, still, I'm um, going to stick with uh, the fuel scarcity just for a little bit and then we'll look into some other concerns uh, as it affects the country. But we're going to do that with uh, someone that's very special and uh, one that has been quiet for a while. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria and he has been a human rights advocate for a long time. Festus Kiamu joins us on Sunrise Daily. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the show at this time. Thank you. What do you make of what's happening? Because Nigerians have faced this situation for way too long. Only just last year, we were not in this kind of quagmire. But today, like all the previous years, Nigerians are suffering from this scarcity of petrol. What do you think is going on? Well, thank you. I, I've been asking a lot of questions from stakeholders and making a bit of research on this. And I got some very interesting perspectives on this. First of all, let us admit that NNPC does not have the capacity to import and distribute by itself this product to all Nigerians. They don't have the capacity. Over the years, they have depended, depended fully on independent marketers. It's just like saying that government should be responsible for feeding Nigerians, all Nigerians every day, and supplying water to all Nigerians every day. Because this product is a product that is used at an hourly basis by all Niger almost all Nigerians, whether by generator, by, fuel, by your uh, motorbike, by your car. So it's a daily, it's an hourly use by Nigerians. The government does not have the capacity to import and distribute to all Nigerians. So what is going on? Now, before sometime early this year, it was still profitable for the marketers to import and sell at the cap, at the rate of 145 that the government, you know, uh, fixed. It was, it was still, you know, okay. Now, but the problem is that while we were jubilating at the rise of crude oil prices all over the world, it was also a bittersweet, you know, uh, kind of experience because the moment crude is rising, the price of crude is rising, the price of the byproduct too, which is PMS, will also rise, which is simple economics. And so the import, the independent marketers could not then import again and make profits at the rate of one for the five. And government has to put a cap on that kind of, on the, on that kind of product that all Nigerians depend on. So it was no longer profitable. The marketers, one by one, pulled out of importation. So it was NMPC, as from about April this year or so, or middle of this year, only NMPC has been responsible for importing fuel into this country. The independent marketers refused to do so. Now, how were they able to do so? Even you know, with, the, with you know, the, the, the rise in the prices of crude, and then the cap of 145. They designed a program which they call the direct supply and direct purchase. They invited this little, little company and said, look, we'll give you crude and give us the value of PMS. Import the other byproducts and bring them in. You know, because, you know in line with the, you know, the value of the crude we are giving to you. But the margin of profit they also gave to those companies, they were not you know, uh, attractive enough for those companies to go ahead. Many companies, you know, little, little companies part participated, but the oil majors and the, the oil major oil companies, they did not participate in that program. And so they, it was a disaster foretold. What is going on is a disaster foretold because at the time the major oil marketer, the major oil marketers pulled out. And then before then, they were responsible for about 80% of the imports, the major oil marketers. NMPC was not responsible for 20%. So you can have a situation, you have a situation where people who were responsible for 80% of the imports of fuel suddenly pulled out of a process. You are going to have a problem. NMPC tried to cover up for that, you know, deficit. And so they should have seen it coming. And then even the alternative mode they provided also, the companies were not participating because the margin of profit in respect of the direct supply, direct purchase, they were not there. Now, when they were importing, still importing, they still do not have the capacity, the storage facilities, 
to store their product NMPC because if they do that, then they can monitor it themselves. Because uh, they still have to depend on independent marketers who have the storage, the tank farms. When they bring them in, they have nowhere to store it. They have to call them in to still help them store these products. Mr. Festus, you know, you know, uh, Mr. Kiamo, you know that this is between um, de demand and supply. Uh, yes. Very, pretty much that. And yes. we have to consider that very importantly because the NMPC is saying that it is meeting the supply. And the independent marketers who are buying from the NMPC somehow in the, in the process of uh, the supply, the products don't even get to the reservoirs no, to I sell. I think they're not telling the whole truth. Are, they, are those products finding their way out of this country? They are not to the extent of causing this type of scarcity. So the NMPC is not telling the whole truth. Somebody has to pay the price in NMPC for what is going on. Okay, I'll they let are you not continue with your line of thoughts. Yes. Will you continue with your line of thoughts? We'll take a very short break now. We'll be back. Join us again.